Hey everybody, Last Outrider here. I know some of you are wondering, what the fuck happened? Well, this is in response to me having to make a video without my hat. Ha! I'm not wearing a hat. You like it? I thought you would. Ha 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 This video, my friend, is going to be a fluff video from the Tau because they need some loving. And so I'm going to give it to them. Boing! We're going to talk about the Tau Firebase Support Cadre video that I put out a little while ago. Here's the fluff from that codex. Let's see what it's like. There is no foe that cannot be overcome by a belief in the greater good and relentless application of firepower. <laughs> yeah. That was a holograph, hologlyph, holographic motto projected atop the Theo Ovasa munitions facility doesn't say where those facilities are but that's okay I assume the Tao Empire has survived a great many horrors in its quest to impose a new destiny on the galaxy some of these have been literal monsters such as the grotesque weapon hosts of the Tyranid Hive Fleas whereas others have been metaphorical. Metaf yeah, it is metaphorical. Sorry, I thought it was going to say metaphysical for a second. Have been metaphorical. <laughs> the true scale and power of the Imperium's domain foremost amongst them. The events that unfolded in the Damocles Gulf have shaken the Tau to their core. There, they encountered the Space Marines of the Imperium, a foe every bit as mighty as their own firecast, if not even more so. The grueling wars that followed the clash of these two empires led to a change of doctrine, for whenever the Space Marines engaged the hunter cadre of the firecast in close quarter battle, the Tau would fare disastrously. It was as a direct result of the wars in the Damocles Gulf that the firebase support cadre was formally in instigated. These cadre were countermeasures for such overpowering force that even the elite warriors of the Imperium could not hope to approach them and survive. The Mantle of the Hero Though the armies of the Tau rely on their skimmer tanks and airborne gunships of the aircast for long-range support, the battlefields of the firecast are considered to be the most efficient of all their many killing machines. A battle suit requires only one pilot and often has much of the same firepower as a tank or aircraft aircraft. When a cadre composed of heavy battle suits is deployed, it can change the course of a war. The broadside battle suit is a staple of the firecast armies. Its reach alone is a potent weapon. Its signature weapon systems are the heavy railgun and the smart missile system. Complementary tools of destruction that are system linked to provide lethal accuracy. The whip-crack retort of the railgun is greatly feared by the Imperium's enemies. I'm not the Imperium's enemies, sorry. The enemies of the Tau. It is held in a gunman's stance, much like a fire warrior may hold a pulse carbine. The cylindrical projectile it fires can hammer straight through power armor and even redoubtable tactical dreadnought armor with ease, passing through all 
such incredible with such incredible velocity that the sudden burst of pressure followed by violent decompression reduces all living matter inside to a tangle of semi-liquid mush. Even a space marine's enhanced physiology is no match for the might of the rail gun and such pinpoint devastation. The railgun is roundly hated by the Adeptus Astartes chapters that they have in, when that have encountered it. For not only does it kill their battle brothers upon impact, but it destroys or renders inoperable the progenitoid glands that allow their apothecaries to create more space marines from the following. In this way, it not only kills the Adeptus Astartes of the present, but the Adeptus Astartes of the future as well. Boom, baby. So they're saying it's a, a double fuck you, if I'm reading that correctly. Since the events of the Damocles Gulf War, the firepower of the firecast battle cadres, battle suit cadres, has been bolstered by the addition of the XV-104 Riptide. Over twice the size of the broadside, the Riptide is a powerhouse that boasts not only a profusion of high-end weapon systems, but also an experimental Nova reactor that it uses to boost the offensive capabilities of these systems to a truly terrifying levels. Though the Riptide is a potent weapon indeed, Earthcast weapon experts have verified that it is its kill ratio is optimized when it operates alongside two or more teams of broadside battle suits. When thus farmed into a firebrace support cadres, a common tactic is for the broadside teams to punch railgun fire through any armored transports inbound upon their position, causing their passengers to bail out of the smoking wreck into the riptide's line of fire. It is then that the giant battlesuit opens up with its primary weapon, Nova charging the system if necessary to ensure the scattered enemies are reduced to little more than ashen shadows. If the foe comes in a greater horde, as with the greenskin tribes or the swarms of Tyranids, this fire discipline is reversed. The Riptide's primary weapon will take a great chunk out of the enemy battle line, and the heavy rail rifles then pick off survivors in the manner of snipers, albeit snipers whose rifles can punch through one side of an orc stampa and out of the other. Yeah, I... Good. <laughs> I don't know why... Good. Good, 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 good. Punch it through it. I hope so. That is exactly what a sniper would do. As opposed to, I guess, not punching through it. And here goes a quote. One of their light walkers carried a, a weapon of lethal effect. It fired a form of ultra-high velocity projectile. I saw one of our tanks that had, it had been hit by it. There was a small hole punctioned in each flank. One, the projectile's entry point. The other, its exit. The tiny munition had passed through the vehicle with such speed that everything within the hull, not welded down, had been sucked out through the exit hole, including the crew. We never identified the bodies, for all that remained of them was a red stain upon the ground, extending some 20 meters from the tank. You would figure that they would be able to identify the tank crew by other means than biologically. Like, who's driving this fucking tank today? And that was from Major Kane Mordant of the 607th Heavy Armored Regiment from we don't fucking know where. 
It's apparently just an anonymous 607th. Oh, maybe it's – no, Major Kane Mordant. That's his name. 607th Heavy Army Regiment. No planetary system attachment given. So it could be one of a million planets. An indomitable bulwark will come next in the next episode of the Tau and why they will continue to shoot – through your heads without actually you know this is this is a short one the rest is just going to be timeline history so fuck it an indomitable bulwark though it is an offensive punch though it is the offensive punch of the firebase support cadre that has made it such a valued asset its defensive capabilities are also impressive whereas most battle suits are nimble enough to level a volley through before engaging their jetpacks and move away to avoid retaliation. Broadsides and riptides have heavier armor as their primary protection. Conventional missiles and large caliber bullets rebound from the dense nano-crystalline layers of their outer skin, allowing them to shrug off all but the most Punitive of incoming fire. For protection against the heavy-grade lasers and plasma weapons of the Imperium's army, a fire-based support cadre will often employ shield drones whose protective auras can render las cannon fire no more deadly than a torchlight. Wow. That is a very low-tech analogy to make to a Tau. The purists of the Tau military maintain that the static tactics of the firebase are suboptimal, a primitive throwback to a less enlightened time where the Tau valued ground taken as well as lives saves. Yet, in practice, these cadres are requisitioned on an almost daily basis. Even the famously deft Commander Shadow Sun has used them on numerous occasions to achieve her conquests. Using the fear of the firebase supports cadres strikes into the foe to manipulate the actions of enemy commanders. In truth, all of the Tau's leaders appreciate the fact that there is no foe that the firebase support cadre cannot fuck up. Oh, I'm sorry. Destroy. Be it an orc horde. Adeptus Astartes Strike Force, or Towering Tyranid Bio-Titan. Wow, so an Orc Horde, an Adeptus Astartes Strike Force, and all of that, then they jump to Bio-Titans. So not Carnifaxes or anything like that. Okay. It can be brought low by the combination of the most advanced weapon systems in the Tau Empire can field. Wabam! That's what they say. They're there to bring you the pain. So here's another quote. The Tau are young, yet their fire burns hot enough to reduce the stone hearts of ancient empires to ash. To underestimate them is to invite the cold grasp of death. That was from Irolak Dawnslayer of Craftworld Ulfwe. Ba bow. I hope you like the fluff. Until then, see you next time. Bye.